want to welcome everybody to our webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to talk about Summer Academy at UVM, storytelling with photographs. I see lots of people joining us, so we're so happy to have you here. A few logistics I put into the chat box. Please put your questions in the chat box. I'll do my best to keep an eye on those throughout the presentation and ask our instructor, Andy Frost, those questions for you. And Charlie's also with us. He is on our enrollment team, and he will answer some of the logistic questions for you throughout the presentation. This is also being recorded. So I did want to share that with you. If you want to share the recording and anybody who's RSVP that couldn't join us today, we will also share the recording out. Okay, let's get to it. So we're going to talk briefly about introductions. Who's with us? I know I mentioned both Andy and Charlie. Um, and we're going to talk about what is Summer Academy at the University of Vermont? What is that experience like? And then we're going to do a deep dive into Andy's class, Storytelling with Photography, and then just talk about what are some of the other support services that surround UVM students in our summer academy. And of course, that application and the deadlines and what does that look like to be able to get into our summer academy at UVM. My name is Nicole Willie I. Fenton. I'm the Content Marketing Manager at UVM's Continuing and Distance Education. I'll help lead this conversation today. As I mentioned, we have our professor, Andy Frost, who joins us from the College of Arts and Sciences. He is the the instructor in our um, summer academy storytelling with photographs we'll hear more from andy in just a moment and as charlie i introduced just a few minutes ago he works in our continuing and distance education team and he will be in the chat box answering your questions today as well and you may have the good fortune of working with charlie if you do enroll in our summer academy course Okay, so what is Summer Academy at the University of Vermont? It's a four-week program. Traditionally, it was two weeks on campus and two weeks online. We're moving again this summer to a four-week online virtual Summer Academy program, which is wonderful because we did it last year. And so we've learned a ton about how to do a virtual Summer Academy program. So all of our students are going to benefit so much from the learning from last summer and have a really amazing experience. Summer Academy at UVM usually draws students who just completed 10th, 11th, and, and also graduating high school seniors. Oftentimes, people will take Summer Academy the summer before um, you go into college to continue to earn those credits. Uh, one of the reasons why many people take Summer Academy is so that you can get the firsthand experience of what college courses are like, and you're gaining that three credits that will go towards your college career as well. And you get to build relationships with students from all over the country. Even when it was an online and on-campus program, people came from all over the United States to Summer Academy. So imagine, of course, now as a virtual program, students are, of course, coming from all over the United States. So you really do have an opportunity to meet people from everywhere. And we have a very active Catamount Enrichment virtual learning community. So there are tons of resources and opportunities for you to get to know UVM and a lot of resources here for you as a Summer Academy student. If you have any questions about that throughout, please do put it in the chat box. So what are the courses in UVM Summer Academy? We have a variety of courses. Many courses are in health and medicine, um, and we work in partnership with our Larner College of Medicine. But you see a really interesting mix of courses, drones for environmental mapping. We're going to talk about storytelling with photographs today, neuroscience, facing environmental futures. We have a variety of courses that students can engage with and can take. And what one of the cool things about the listing of courses is that you could take storytelling with photographs this year. You could then come back next year and take drones. You could then come back the year after that and take um, one of the health courses, whatever your areas of interest. So it's a great way to see the variety of courses that we have for your summer academy experience at UVM. But today, we're going to talk about storytelling with photographs. So, Andy, let's go through what is this course? Um, why is this a great course for high school students? Um, maybe go through a few of these points and we'll try to dive in a little bit deeper if you want to get us started. Yeah, so, you know, this course is really built around thinking about how to use photographs to communicate, right? Like we we are kind of like constantly surrounded in a legacy of photographs, right? right? Like they're, we see them in advertisements, we're looking at them on our phones all day, uh, and we're able to take them all the time, right? We're all carrying these cameras with us. Um, and that's great, but there are, you know, we can use them to do more than just like post on Instagram or, or you know, make our 
TikTok videos or whatever you know you're doing with your with your pictures. And um, I'm really interested in the way that you know you can take. Uh, a couple of photographs to start linking them together and you build these kind of interesting and complex things where one photograph is is influencing or speaking to the next um, and that that sort of filters in a variety of, of ways um, and can be really exciting that you and I've talked um, about too is you, you know looking at the variety of ways that sto that photographs can communicate different things and sometimes what you're seeing might not be what is the impression and the interpretation that somebody else might be seeing. So how do you weave in that critical analysis, that communication skills with the photograph being the tool? Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're really used to communicating with words, right? The, that's that's how we communicate, but the pictures do a lot of work. And, and so and like in the class, we spend a lot of time looking at historical examples and our own work and, and kind of breaking them apart and, and see what the, what the pictures are doing. Um, and that can help us, you know, understand how to communicate visually and how to understand uh, what things are sort of um, uh, maybe subconsciously being communicated to us through images, right? Uh, so that's anything from looking at how pictures are put together on a very formal basis to thinking about them conceptually, how images uh, work metaphorically, and then so you know, take, going through those ways that the pictures are different to each person. You know, um, my students right now, class I'm teaching, are working on a, a project uh, dealing with um, uh, how photographs communicate emotions and, and thinking through how a picture that might, for you, bring up, you know, warm feelings of a, a particular time might not do that for someone else. And so then how can you make a picture that, that create or that, that stirs feelings in someone else and and that's part of communicating with, with images and, and figuring out uh, how to do that. Let's talk about equipment and photography knowledge. You know I, I would imagine and, and students you know folks joining us please if you have questions related to what is needed do I need a you know a great camera can I use my phone what would students be expected to know about photography and to know how to use cameras if they're if they're doing something or even more things that they can do with their phone their phone camera yeah. as well so i mean the way i the way i've, I've built this course and the way, way i think about it um you know it's an entry level course so uh and it's really the the crux is thinking about how pictures work so we talk about how to use the camera and um I don't require any kind of special equipment, so you can you can uh, approach the class with a fancy uh, DSLR, or you can use your cell phone. They both take pictures, right? At the end of the day, they do the same thing. You're making the same decisions, and and I talk about uh, you know with a when you make a photograph, you are going out in the world, right? And you have a bunch of decisions you have to make. Like, where do you put the lens? So, like, you know, where's the camera? Where do you, you you're choosing to draw frame lines around the world, right? And so that's the same whether you're using your iPhone or you're using some fancy camera. So, in that regard, it's it's really kind of a fun class because people bring what they have, and then we get into some some technical stuff, though it's not overly technical. So I like to give people a set of tools. Um, so students, we we talk about like thinking about how to edit pictures and and why you might and some techniques for that, and then I you know give you a bunch of of options. So you know here I'll, I'll share with students tips and techniques for editing on the phone and, and apps they can use to get more control, and then. Uh, you know, hear a set of um, tutorials and things for Lightroom and for Photoshop. So if you want to get into more in-depth things, there are the tools for that. Uh, but it's not like a central focus of the class. So it's kind of great for the spectrum. So if you are just starting, you just have an iPhone, and you want to 
see what it what it does. It's accessible, and if you know what you're doing and you you know know uh, all of the aperture values on your camera by heart, like you can still learn things and and work through. So. One of the good points too that you've often made is there you can learn a lot of this stuff. You can find tutorials on how to edit. You can find tutorials how to use the different filters on your iPhone. But what often isn't taught, which is something that you teach in this course, is is understanding the why. Why are you taking this? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, maybe how do you help students to understand that and to be thinking about that as they continue beyond the course? So one of my favorite one of my favorite lectures and and discussions with students um, it's talking about like what a good photograph is and it's such a you know like I, I can't tell you how much time i spent in graduate school having this, these arguments right it's it's kind of a, a funny thing and it's a it's a fickle uh it's kind of slippery thing um and it's not always the same right like a good photograph at your graduation is different than a good photograph that might end up in some museum, right? Um, but thinking through what goes into that, so you have the formal technical things, right? Is it well exposed? What are the frame lines like? You know, does it? How is the composition? But then digging into like what are you doing? You know, what's the what's happening conceptually? Are there multiple layers of meaning, or are there different avenues that we can explore? Are there entry points? Uh, is it is it complex, or is it really simple? Um, are you flattening the world, or are you enriching it? Enriching it? Are you? You know, one of my favorite things about photography is that a, a, I think a great photograph can take something really familiar, something that we all know, and transform it into something totally new and different. And, and that's really exciting when it happens. We spend a lot of time kind of thinking through that and looking at examples of how that works and then practicing and, and then through uh, feedback and honing those skills. Cool. Great. Hopefully our participants are learning about what the course is like. Um, so thank you for sharing that detailed information. So let's get into a little bit more of the structure. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, four weeks. Um, walk us through Andy, and, and on the other slide I have the week three and week four, but what what are the weeks looking like for students if they're signing up for this course? Yeah, so you know the whole way that I, I build courses is to sort of scaffold skills uh, one on top of another. So we're sort of building this this uh, house of of skills, and so class starts off um, particularly these. Uh, online classes where we're not spending time together, it's really important to try to build some classroom connection. And so we, we start off um, by just telling our own stories and using photographs to, to tell those stories as a, as a way to, to, to introduce ourselves um, and kind of build that, that connection. And then that, that brings in some reading about what stories are, just thinking about how to set this, these parameters for the class. Like what, what is a story? How do we tell stories? How are stories structured, right? Like we, there are huge, you know, there's, there's a ton of, of information out there about that. And so we're sort of building that structure of what a story is while also looking at how cameras work and getting some of that, um, just making sure everyone's got a little bit of the lingo down so that we're sort of on the same same footing and that you're kind of familiar, familiar with the tools you're going to use. And so then uh, we, we start looking in the second week at how photographs work together. So, you, you know, we thought about stories and how uh, to tell a story um, how stories have been told over generations. We've got a kind of an idea of what the tools that we're going to be using are. And so now um, we're really making pictures and looking at how uh, images connect one to the other. And then that builds, uh, so we've got this, we've got this idea about stories. We've got this connection of, you know, um, sequencing, thinking about pictures, building, um, to more than the sum of their parts, right? And then the first kind of like uh, 
conceptual application is to use photographs to tell the story of a place and and describe um, a place but in a way that makes it um, what I like to say is if it's a place that that I know of it's a place that I'm familiar with like show it to me in a totally new way so that it's it's as if I've never been there um, break it open you know and if it's a place that we've never been uh, you have so much uh, freedom, but to tell this this story. And one of the great things about photographs is they're they're all fictional, right? Like uh, they're they're two dimensional, and our world is in three dimensions. They have frame lines, and our, our world doesn't. So you, you have this kind of freedom to tell this story how you want it to be. Um, and so building that that kind of uh, thinking about a, a specific place and using that as a guide. And then finally, we kind of take all of those things and wrap them up into um, a, a short, complex narrative that has uh, multiple parts. So thinking about how stories are structured, um, you know, this would be like your long story. So these kind of other things have been short stories, and so maybe this has uh, three chapters. You know, so maybe it's an extension of that, that story of a place, but there's an opening and you, you know, show us around and then uh, there's a plot twist, right, and how you, you build a complex narrative using images. Yeah. Um, and then that, so that kind of like, yeah, sorry, that kind of um, like ties things up really neatly in this uh, kind of sort of this final project. So you can build those skills and have this. Sounds this well rounded kind of and sounds super exciting. And so, you know, what I think I'm, I hear so much about when you talk about it, it's we all are taking so many pictures all the time. And so I think, and, and, and high school students, you know, these are um, students that join Summer Academy you've grown up with all this technology uh, as part of every everyday life. And so I think it's a really interesting opportunity to think about um, that visual communication in, in a different way and in, in a meaningful way in some, in some circumstances. So I'm gonna dive into, we'll come back um, and ask Andy a few more questions, but please, if you have any questions um, for Andy about the course, about specifics, um, please do put them in the chat box. So one of the other things that we have for our students in Summer Academy, I mentioned this in the beginning, it's the Catamount Enrichment Learning Community. So it's a virtual community where you are engaging not only with your peers in Summer Academy, but with UVM and all of the resources as well. There's live events, there's webinars, there's opportunities to talk to and learn about financial aid for college. There's so much more that goes on in the enrichment community beyond just um, your course information. So that's something that we have created and are really looking forward to working with our students this summer. So the other thing I wanna make sure that students are aware of is the dual enrollment program. If you are a Vermont student in high school, um, you wanna ask your guidance counselor about dual enrollment because you can get um, uh, two vouchers a year. So you can get up to four credits and there's a, really it's covering the cost of tuition. So there's often a, a small fee which we'll go over here in a second, the comprehensive fee. Um, and so you can potentially take Summer Academy, if you are a Vermont high school student and able to be approved through dual enrollment, you can take it at tuition at no cost. So it's something that you really do want to ask your guidance counselor about to make sure that you're eligible. And it is something that you can go back and, and do next year as well. So you wanna make sure that this is on your radar because it's an amazing opportunity to take advantage of and to gain those college credits um, at that tuition um, not being charged. Um, so here's some pricing. I wanted to make sure that everybody saw in-state Vermont pricing for high school students um, is um, with dual enrollment, the comprehensive fee is the only cost. And then in-state Vermont high school students without dual enrollment, the tuition for Summer Academy is $1,024.50 plus that comprehensive fee. Um, and all of this information is on our website as well. So lots and lots of information about cost. Um, I don't expect you to probably remember these numbers off the top of your head. So there's lots of information on our website. And then if you're not a Vermont student, um, the other thing that is 
super amazing about Summer Academy at UVM is for out of state high school students, the tuition pr price reflects a 50% savings from the academic out of state tuition during the normal calendar year. So you are getting an amazing price on college credits if you take advantage of Summer Academy, even from um, outside of Vermont as well. Also wanted to just make sure you know that the application deadline is coming up. I know June 24 seems like a little bit of ways away, but here comes May. So if you're thinking about applying to Summer Academy, space is limited. So I would highly recommend you get onto the website, you think about starting that application. Um, Charlie likely will be there to help on the other end if you have questions about your application. Um, but do know that the deadline is going to be coming up pretty quickly. Um, Andy, I wanted to come back. Samantha has a question. Um, she, uh, she asked, does the class meet at a specific time daily? So let's talk about that, Andy. Let's talk about the structure of the class. It's asynchronistic. So what does that mean? And I'm sure everybody pretty knows now, given that we've all been virtual the last year. But what does that mean <laughs> for your class? And what is the kind of time commitment that students might be expected? Yeah, so you know, with uh, with these with these in kind of intensive summer classes, it can be really hard uh, schedule wise, right? Like we're, you know, maybe maybe going to be doing a little traveling this summer, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and then of course we have you know we all have lots of um, obligations. So the asynchronous classes, um, I. I like teaching this way because it gives the most flexibility. So there's not, there aren't set times. Uh, each week has a module that students can work through um, more or less at their own pace. It's it's uh, structured so that there is like a, a daily flow um, with a kind of things opening on Monday morning and uh, ending at the end of the week. Um, or sometimes they'll open on a Friday so that you know, you have like a full week, um, but it gets people, you know, I've had uh, students sort of in across the country in different time zones or people who work, uh, who are working all day. So it gives that flexibility. Um, time wise, you know, it's, it's definitely a real commitment. Um, so it's, like I wouldn't want to do this on top of two or three other classes for sure. Um, but I would expect to spend, you know, uh, probably, whoa. I mean, it's going to depend on how, it's going to depend on the student for sure, but, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20 hours a week, it's a real, you know, we're condensing an entire semester into four weeks, so it's a big, um, if we were meeting, you know, if we were meeting in person, um, these classes run all day, every, you know, half the day, every day, basically. Um, so it's a, it's a, it is a real time commitment. Um, but at least with this, I think, I like to think anyway that it's it's structured in a way that you can work it into your life. There's a lot of uh, photographing, which means you're going out into the world rather than having to sort of like sit and do a lot of reading. Though there there is some real reading. <laughs> so a lot of advantages. It sounds like too. I mean, this course gives you all of the things in terms of the virtual experience, connecting with your peers, learning, being involved in a college course, but you're also out there in the world exploring to be able to show. Um, right. you know, your vision in, in terms of your photography. So I think that's a great perspective too. And it's, it's really great, um, you know, when for, for these kinds of photo classes, you know, like the one that I'm teaching now, all of my students have the same kind of material because everyone's here in Burlington, right? Um, and one of the wonderful things about these classes that are online is that you have students who are working in totally different places and then sharing that work and, uh, so it's not, you don't have like six people photographing the waterfront in Burlington and, and sort of like being on each other's turf, right? It, it, so it, it allows for these really interesting and exciting conversations uh, in totally different places. And, and that's uh, like a really wonderful part of this. For sure. Yeah, that's a really great point. Thank you for bringing that up. And I just want to give, um, oh good, Zinnia just asked a quick question. I was going to say any, um, yeah. any last questions. Um, any face-to-face, -face, any face-to-face -face time with each other or, or with you if the students need it? Yeah, definitely. So um, 
I have, I keep sort of regular office hours and we'll do kind of check-ins with students. So anyone who wants to uh, have, you know, we'll do uh, meetings, you know, not like this, but, you know, like video uh, chats. Um, it's a great way for students as they're working through assignments to share work if they want kind of quick uh, verbal feedback. Um, that's the main kind of face-to-face -face interaction. So I'm definitely like always available. Um, and, uh, and that can be really great. Uh, I had some really good connections last summer uh, with students who were just, you know, trying to, to work through an idea and, you know, we can like hop on a Teams call and chat it out in 10 minutes and, uh, and it, it, you know, that tends to work really well. Right. Thank you. And thanks for asking that. Great question, Sinia. If there's any other questions, please do ask them now because um, we're going to wrap up here in just a minute. I have, a, I have another question for you, Andy. Um, this, the things that you're talking about in terms of communication, you know, a lot of it is the, the ability to visually communicate, but also communicate um, audibly about what you're trying to do. Why do you think that that's a good skill for high school? It's a good skill for anybody. But what's the value in a high school student taking this kind of course, do you think? I mean, I think that there's, there's, you know, you have, I would make an argument for overall visual literacy, right? Like we're sort of surrounded by these images. So being able to uh, piece them together is uh, just like a, a generally useful skill, whether that's, um, whether that's like coming up with the best uh, way to have like five images on your Instagram post to maximize your engagement um, because probably we're all doing that right <laughs> or that's like choosing images to illustrate a presentation um, and making smart choices uh, that you know it can be really invaluable uh, to setting yourself up for uh, having some of those photo and visual literacy skills um, for a variety of kind of possible career opportunities or, or trajectories. And that's, you know, I think about how many times that I have to have a visual, you know, in a presentation in, in you know, advertising and in, in content and in, in webinar graphics, you know, just uh, thinking about right. there's just so many opportunities for us to choose images and what a great opportunity for high school students to be able to get this um, learning and this opportunity to learn from you in high school. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, everybody who joined us today. As I mentioned, we'll share the recording out, but looks like it's pretty quiet on questions. Thank you, Charlie, for being there on the back end if we needed help. Um, so we're going to wrap up. And so again, as I mentioned, um, it, we are edging up on the deadline for application and applications. Charlie mentioned to us before we started that applications are coming in fast and furious for Summer Academy. And so space is limited. So if it's something you are interested in, we highly recommend you jump on the website and check out the application. And hopefully in a matter of months, we will see you in July in the Summer Academy Storytelling with Photography. Um, thank you so much, Andy. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Okay. Thanks.